Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Habib Ali and I am an ICT tutor by profession. Welcome back to another lesson. So in today's lesson we are going to be learning about how to use the average A function to work out the average exam results and what is the difference between the average and the average A function. So this is something we will also learn about. For today's lesson, I'm using a file called Lesson 62, Average A Function, and you can get a copy of this exact same file for you to work along with myself. I will leave a link for you in the description box, so please click on the link. This will take you directly to Lesson 62 on my website and where you can download a copy of this file. This um, the file simply just shows some basic exam results some students have taken, all made of data, the module, the level, and the results of each one of the students' exams. Now, let's go ahead and look at today's question before anything else. The question is asking us to find the average exam results using the average A function and also the question is asking us, okay, what is the main difference between the average and average A function? So it is, there is going to be a lot of emphasis on this question today simply because at the end of today's lesson, if you can answer this question, then that means you have thoroughly understood the main purpose of the average A function. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a start. So in this cell, I have created a simple sum function just to add up all these cells to give me a total value of everyone's exam results. And in this cell, I have created a general average function to work out the average exam results amongst all these 10 students. If you do want to know more about the average function, I have created two lessons, lesson number four and lesson number nine, for which you will get a suggestion right now at the top. So if you do want to know more, please do click on those suggestions and it will take you to those relevant lessons. Anyway, um, let's uh, carry on with this lesson and I'm going to work out the average A function to see what kind of results I get for all the students exam results. So let's start by typing in equals and then we type in average A, open the bracket and we simply select the range for the exam results and close the bracket and we press enter. Okay, so I've pressed enter, but I still get 74.9, just the same as the average function. So that hasn't made any difference to the results. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some changes in this results column and see whether this affects any of these two functions that we have got here. So I'm going to change, let's say this one to zero and another one to zero and perhaps a third one to zero and let's see if that makes any difference. Okay, this hasn't because we still get 53.3 for each one of them. So that hasn't made any difference simply because what Excel is doing here, it is adding up all these numerical values, um, including the well, including the zeros, which obviously will give you zero. So it's adding them all up, all 10 of them, and then dividing it by 10, hence it's getting 53.3. So if I just test this out here for you, um, this is the reason I've got this test cell here, and I have got a sum function here to which has added up all these values. So I'm just going to do equals and do a quick division formula here for you. So equals um, this cell divided by, so if I did 10 now and press enter, I get 53.3 and this is why we've got 53.3 here. So I'm going to be constantly using this cell just to test each one of these answers and to clarify as to why we have got what we get. Okay. The next thing what I'm going to do is just sometimes in real life, we tend to, um, for the learners, maybe when they get zero results, we may just leave them as blank. So I'm just going to empty one of um, all three of them just by backspace or the delete key. And you can see the results have now, has now gone down to 76.1. 
Now, the reason it has done that is because when we have blank cells and we have the average function, Excel does not actually include these blank cells within the range, i.e. what I'm saying is when you divide by the number and this time it's going to divide by 7 rather than 10, so it does not include these three within the calculation. So such as if I did this one now and I change E13 divided by instead of 10, if I put 7, I should get exactly the same. There we are, I've got 76.1 as well. So, so far, there isn't any difference between these two functions for any blank cells or any zero values within your range, you could actually use either of them and they will give you exactly the same results. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, let's say in a situation where uh, one of the students did not turn up for the exam and instead of giving them zero, I'm going to type in didn't, um, didn't show. Or let's say another student, another student rang in and said they were poorly, you know, unwell. So I'm just going to make a note instead of giving them zero. I'm making a note as to why they haven't turned up. Maybe the third one wasn't well as well, so we can have poorly again. So when we have text within a within an average range of cells now i can see there is a difference between these two functions the average has remained as 76.1 but the average a um, calculation um, has gone down to 53.3 now this is the main difference and this is what we need to understand in today's lesson. So I'm going to explain and break this down for you. Okay, when we have a text within our average range of values or, or, or range of data, what Excel does when we use the average A function, it actually includes them in the range. And what it does, it treats the textual data as a zero value. So for example, it will treat this cell as zero, this cell as zero, as well as this cell as zero. So because it is treating them as zero, what it will do, it will add them all up and then divide by 10, the 10, the actual whole um, student. So because when you are actually working out the average cal calculation, in reality, you do really want to include those three individuals that did not turn up. Because if they did not turn up, their answer by default will be zero. Zero, in other words, they failed, but the results will be zero. So we do really need to include them. So in a situation or a scenario such as this, you couldn't really use the average function that wouldn't give you the correct average results because it will only include these seven students and it will exclude them three because in their results cell, they have textual data. So, in reality, in a situation like this, um, I'm emphasizing that we need to use the average A function. Now I'm going to test this as well and show you that it is actually working as per I am saying. So I'm going to do E13 divided by 10 because remember we are including them three. So if I change this to 10, let's see what we get we also get 53.3 exactly the same as this 53.3 okay i hope you have understood this and to clarify further what i have done is i have made some notes here for you which i want to present to you and explain a little bit more so I've got a heading here, differences between the average and the average A function. So if you have numbers in there, or if you have empty cells in there, or if you have text in there, let's see how these average functions behave. So if you were to use the average function and it includes, if you have numbers in the cell, it will include them, so that is fine. Also the average A function will include them, that is also absolutely fine, just as I have demonstrated at the beginning, if you remember. However, if there are any empty empty cells 
Excel, um, the average function will ignore it. Also, the average A function will ignore it, just like I showed you earlier. And when you have text in, 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 in cells within the range of your average calculation, then the average function will ignore the text, such as this one has. It has ignored them three and only has included these seven cells within this range. However, the average A does not include the text. It does include them and counts them as a zero. So to conclude and answer today's main question, which was what is the main difference between the average and the average A function? The answer would actually be this, which uh, I'm saying to you is average A includes any textual data in your average calculations and treats each cell as a zero. So please remember when you are trying to work out the average of the entire range regardless whether you have numbers in there or you have text in there and you want to include every single um, people maybe such as this example i've got people in here in your example or whatever you are working with you may have something else but whatever it is remember the entire range will be included and you will get the actual um, correct answer so you got to decide when to use the average air function and when to use the average function if you do ever get stuck please refer to this little table that i have created here for you um, and this will answer any of your questions or any of the misunderstandings you may have and this brings us to the end of today's lesson. Please do leave any comments uh, for me or any questions you may have and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share this lesson and subscribe to our channel if you have not done so. And I shall see you in the next lesson. So until then, please do look after yourself and goodbye for now.